Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I recently decided to pick up designer's gouache and in this video I'll be showing you the full process of this little study that I did recently from start to finish. But before I get to that, I have a very exciting announcement to make. So I've been mentioning a new art book in the works uh, for the past couple of months and I am so excited to finally announce the Kickstarter date, uh, which is one week from now on Thursday, July 14th at 12 p.m. Uh, Eastern Daylight Time. There's a link to the loading page in my description where you can sign up for a notification so you can get an email when the Kickstarter goes live. And I will definitely be sharing a lot more info about the campaign and the unique extra items uh, that I that it will have. But for now, um, if you're interested in my art book and would like to support me, please mark your calendar and check out the link in my description. Yeah, so okay, now onto the video gouache, uh, a medium that I've been interested in exploring for many years for a long time but uh, never actually got around to. I did use it once before when I was still uh, studying in college but that was kind of uh, a very short amount of time and I don't even remember what kind of gouache I used or how it really behaved so I decided to get first actually I think I have to make a clarification um, and point out the difference between acrylic gouache and designers gouache so I've definitely used acrylic gouache a couple of times within the last few years and as it turns out it is actually completely different from designers gouache which I will probably talk about later but just thought I'd again um, clarify that this is designers gouache and I'm just using this little starter set uh, from Winsor & Newton and I also got this little palette from Amazon. I'm not sure if this palette was actually a good choice but it's very pretty and I like the pattern that's on uh, printed on, on it so that's, that's basically the extent of my thought process on that. I'll talk about it a little bit more later. But yeah, um, I will say right off the bat that the colors in the starter set I found to be totally insufficient and I'll kind of explain why as I go. But yeah, I also figured I'd mention that I did do this other study that you see on the page here beforehand, but I just kind of didn't want any pressure of recording, so I painted it without recording it, unfortunately. Um, I do kind of wish I recorded it now, but it was a very fun first experience and I guess it was nice that um, I didn't have the pressure of uh, the camera on me. But yeah, so I decided to use this brand because I, like my friend recommended it, that uh, quality is always pretty good for uh, Windsor & Newton products. I've used some before. I actually really wanted to get Holbein brand, but I couldn't find it anywhere uh, in a set, so I just decided to go with this, which is totally fine. But yeah, so the first thing I did was start with the sketch um, after finding this little reference photo on Pinterest. I picked it because I thought the colors looked kind of difficult to mix, so I wanted to see how I would tackle that. And for the sketch, I just used a colored pencil, Colorace, uh, usually my go-to colored pencils for sketching. And I used this pencil because I knew that the color kind of matched the color scheme of the reference photo. And I just put down a relatively simple sketch uh, in order to have my guidelines. As I've probably mentioned before, I'm a very line-based person, so it's difficult for me to just start with paint right off the bat. I don't know if anyone actually does that, but anyways, this is the approach I decided to take. And I also decided to specifically film the color mixing, or at least some of it, in order to show you guys how I kind of went about doing it. The first decision that I made was to put down a darker, like a grayish tone for the background and like make the silhouette of the girl pop out. I don't know exactly why I decided to do it, but I don't know, it was just the first thing that came to mind and I was still kind of exploring different ways in which I could start uh, the process. So this is the one that I went with for this particular study. and. After putting down the tones, I decided to kind of tackle like the next biggest shape of like relatively speaking shape of colors, um, which is the kimono. And of course, I decided to leave out all the details and just kind of put down the base color first. 
And as you can see, I mixed a bunch of different colors and kind of just laid them out on top of each other. Um, because I wanted to experiment with just mixing like what what kind of transpires when I put in various colors into the initial color that I mixed. And I just kind of left it at that and decided to put down the next biggest shape of color, which is the face. This was pretty difficult for me to tackle, actually, because um, there's a lot of subtle gradients going on there. And I was pretty nervous about uh, making those... Uh, or replicating those with gouache since I don't really know how to blend too well. Somehow in this particular case, it really turned out not bad. Like it actually went a lot better than I expected it to. And I will also mention that I decided to leave out the white because from what I've noticed in my previous little study is that it is difficult to lighten an area after the fact so i figured the best approach here would be to just leave the lighter areas alone and then i could always paint something on top later but um i decided not to paint the white in after just covering an area with like a darker beige skin tone if that makes any sense so yeah and what i'm doing with the hair here is i could see some lighter tone like a brownish warm tone showing through the hair and so I decided to just experiment with putting down an underlay of that warm tone before painting the darker hair color over top later on. So I just, you know, it, it looks similar to the skin tone, so I just put it down first because I was already working with that color scheme. And at that point, I just started to put in some more basic tones before or basic colors, I guess, before moving on to some of the details on the kimono. I think looking back, I could have definitely put a lot more work into the folds to just like elaborate on the folds that you can see underneath the texture. And I wasn't entirely sure how I was going to tackle this really kind of complicated pattern on top of the kimono, but obviously I took like a lot of liberties with the pattern without fully trying to replicate it because that would have just been redundant and taken too long long so yeah i just kind of carefully make decisions as i go i think um looking back i could have probably used a brighter red in this part but um the one that i mixed was a little too too dark i think on the top there but yeah um i some of the biggest differences that i found uh with gouache and like the other mediums that i've used before which are watercolor and colored ink is that i mean it is completely different but it, it is actually possible to make it uh look a little bit like watercolor when it's significantly diluted so as you can see when i was putting down the base gray around the girl i kind of used a wet on wet technique in some parts and there it does actually look pretty similar to the watercolor and i think it's really cool that you can get such different effects um textural effects while just using the same type of paint um there's definitely a lot more ra textural range i think uh between like gouache compared to watercolor which is something that i do kind of prefer although watercolor obviously is more transparent overall so i think that's a pretty big difference but yeah, so as you can see now, I'm just working on the hair and uh, the more I was working on the study, the more I just fell in love with all the different textures that I can create with this brush. I don't often use a flat brush like this. I usually use the tapered ones and I was just having so much fun using a flat brush and um, I was really trying to utilize the bristle texture on the hair which i think work out pretty well um then decided to move back to the flower which i've completely forgotten about but uh yeah i just wanted to say that as someone who actually paints a lot digitally as well for uh, various client work like unfortunately i can't show most of that stuff to you guys but i found that i really like textured brushes but it is so difficult to try to mimic the traditional look with them because i i don't know how people do it successfully like the way that i've approached it digitally has been to just like rotate the canvas a lot and to somewhat adjust the angle of the brush digitally 
but it is so much faster easier and more fun and satisfying to do that on paper because you can simply you know adjust the position of the brush or your hand and it just makes the whole process so much more intuitive and fun so yeah that's one of the things that i really love about traditional work and why i keep going back to it i mean in the end they are completely different but i find that when i do digital work i do try to replicate kind of like an organic look sometimes which is just so much easier to achieve when you're actually using traditional mediums but yeah so as you can see uh, now I'm just kind of getting into the little details of putting more work into the pattern on the kimono. Um, now, I was thinking around this time that maybe using the background gray tone uh, at the very beginning wasn't like the best choice because um, it does make the color picking a little bit different. Like I'm just wondering if maybe everything is lighter, like all the colors that I picked are lighter than the reference photo i don't know what exactly influenced that but i don't know again i can't expect the color picking to be perfect either especially since i had such a basic palette it was honestly really difficult to mix some of the colors like with the skin i had to put a lot like i have to adjust it so much before i was satisfied with the color that i picked and in the end i do think it's a little bit too light but i digress so yeah um at this point i just put in more and more darker colors into the hair and uh i was trying to be very careful to preserve some of those brush strokes and in the end i did end up painting over one of my favorite ones uh around the bangs area which i thought was kind of a shame but it is what it is learning experience and also uh, i want to apologize for this shift in focus so basically i didn't lock focus on the sketchbook because i wanted the color mixing to be in focus and i did that a little bit closer to the camera and i didn't realize that while i was painting the details on the face like the eyes and stuff the camera just kept going in and out of focus so sorry about guys i mean thankfully um it's just this one part so it's not it's not too bad but yeah it's because my hand was just directly under the lens i guess but yeah so after i finished these little final touches on the face which were very minimal i didn't want to overwork it or like ruin it by accident um i do wish that i kind of fix the neck a little bit it looks a little splotchy to me and that's something that i just never bothered to go back to but now i know and um yeah after i put in all the little little details and finishing touches i did decide to go and white out the background it's something that i loosely planned from the start just because i find it super satisfying to use opaque white to paint over uh, an area in a painting it's kind of something that i did in my last video if you can recall so i was i just wanted to do that again and that's probably the biggest reason why i decided to put down a gray background first so <clears throat> that's pretty much the last step of this little study and it was a pretty quick one i think overall it took just a little bit over an hour and i'm definitely looking forward to doing a lot more of these i think i learned a lot just from having to um you know make a lot of decisions on the spot and not like this approach is very different from my typical one because it relies a lot more on brushwork and not lines which is something that i'm super used to so it was very challenging for me to do that but i think it kind of unlocked an entirely different um i don't know fun sort of side of how like the approach i think the difference is what made it a lot more fun and engaging than my typical approach so that's why I definitely want to do more of these going forward. And yeah, uh, that's that's about it. That's all I can say. Uh, I would highly recommend trying out this medium if you haven't before. It's a lot of fun. And um, I always like to start with studies when I tackle a new medium because it gives me an opportunity to just focus on technique rather than the content of the image. 
Um, but yeah, I, I really hope you enjoyed watching this process. And uh, I just want to mention one more time about my new art book Kickstarter, which is happening next week. Please check out the link in my description and sign up to get notified when it goes live. And like I said, I will have more info soon. So thank you so much for watching and I can't wait to make another video. It's fun to be back on YouTube. <laughs> All right. Bye guys.